This video is on domain name system. Domain name system resolves host names like google.com to an IP address. And by default, DNS operates on port 53. Everything that is connected on the internet has an IP address, from your smartphone to a company's web server. All these systems find and communicate with one another by using IP addresses. But when you use your device and open up a web browser to go to a website, you don't have to remember the IP address. Instead, you can enter domain name like google.com. This is because DNS can translate an easy to remember names like google.com to an IP addresses like 192.0.0.1. Everyone calls it the phone book of the internet. DNS server is basically a computer system with database containing the public IP addresses associated with the names of the websites. Whenever a DNS server finds the IP address that matches the domain name, browsers take the address and use it to send data to content delivery network edge servers or origin servers. That way the information on the website server can be accessed by the user. The chart shown here is DNS hierarchy, also known as domain name space, which is composed of five different elements. We have root, top level domains, second level domains, subdomain, and host. This is simply an inverted tree structure that helps resolve a domain name. The resolution process starts at the root level and works its way down until we resolve an IP address. Root server contains a global list of top level domains and sits at the top. It is the first step in resolving a domain name. It answers requests for records in the root zone and answers other requests by returning a list of authoritative name servers for the appropriate top level domain. When you type in a domain name in your browser, it first contacts recursive DNS servers throughout the world. Many people use recursive DNS servers managed by their internet service provider. Recursive DNS query is something that occurs when a client requests information from a DNS server that is set to query subsequent DNS servers until a definitive answer is returned to the client. It's a process that will continue until answer is given. If the recursive DNS server doesn't have information, it connects to another type of DNS server to continue the research until it finds out. Usually the information is cached, but if the recursive DNS name servers did not have the DNS record cache in its system, it will need to ask for help from authoritative DNS hierarchy to get the answer. DNS cache is something that exists to streamline the DNS lookup process. Almost all browsers automatically creates it. However, to ensure a high security level, it is cleaned out regularly. That is to ensure that if the web page has changed the location of its web server since it was last cached, it doesn't grab an inaccurate IP address. This also lessens the attacks like DNS poisoning or DNS spoofing. Now back to authoritative DNS. An authoritative DNS server is a regional phone book that matches an IP addresses with domain names. They are responsible for providing answers to recursive DNS name servers about where specific websites can be found. There are different authoritative DNS servers that cover different regions. And DNS servers accomplish two things. First, it stores a list of domain names and their associated IP addresses. And second, it responds to requests from recursive DNS server about the correct IP address assigned to a domain name. After getting the answer, the recursive DNS server sends the information back to the computer that requested it. Each part of domain, like example.com, has a specific authoritative DNS name server. The root domain name servers will know the IP addresses of authoritative name servers that handle DNS queries for the top-level domain, like .com, .edu. The recursive DNS server first asks the root domain name server for the IP address of .com. Then it moves down to the TLD server. If a DNS server for a zone is not working and cached information has expired, the domain becomes inaccessible. This is why DNS is organized with the hierarchical structure from root level down to be managed independently. Also, each zone has at least two DNS servers to ensure redundancy and DNS zone transfer is utilized. Zone transfer is simply the passing of DNS information from one name server to secondary name server. Now let's talk about DNS record types. Record files, also known as zone files, are instructions that live in an authoritative DNS servers. 
These files provide information about a domain like who the admin is to what IP address is associated with that domain. Think of it as a product review page with all the information about that product or a brochure. Here are the common DNS records. A record, quad A record, C name record, mail exchange record, text record, name server record, start of authority record, service record, and a pointer record. Let's go over these records in more detail. When you buy and start hosting your website on your server, you will need to find out what type of address it has on it. If the server has an IP4 address, then you're going to need to add an A record to your domain name. If the server has an IPv6 address, then you're going to need a quad A record. A record is required to resolve a fully qualified domain name. This is required to basically connect your server's IP address to a domain name. You can do this by contacting domain registrar and sending them the IP address of a web server you're hosting and request them to add a host record. You can also do it by yourself if you have the access to hosting control panel by adding the correct record and pointing it to the right IP address. Then we have canonical name, CNAME. It is a type of DNS database record that indicates a domain name is the nickname or alias for another domain name. This is essential when running multiple services from single IP address. Let's talk example. When you're hosting a website and a file transfer protocol service for transferring data, FTP server will have ftp.example.com as a canonical name. When the DNS server searches the DNS record for ftp.example.com, it's going to trigger another DNS lookup thus restarting a query name using CNAME. It then returns the IP address for example.com via A or quad A record. This is done because IP address changes. Only the DNS A or quad A record for the root website example.com needs to be updated, since CNAME records aren't pointed to the IP but to the domain name. This is why CNAME records have to point to a domain and not an IP address. A domain with CNAME record can either point to another domain with a CNAME record or to a domain with an A record. Basically, you use CNAME when you want to point several websites owned by a single entity or organization to its primary website or to provide a separate host name for different network services like FTP or email, pointing each host name to a root domain, or to provide subdomains for each customer on a single service provider's domain and use the CNAME to point to a subdomain to a customer's root domain, or to register a same domain in several countries and point each country's specific version to a main domain. Then we have mail exchange record. This is a record which directs email to a mail server. This record indicates how email message should be routed in accordance with simple mail transfer protocol. Just like CNAME records, mail exchange record must always point to another domain. Message transfer agent MTA software is responsible for querying mail exchange records. When a user sends an email, the MTA sends a DNS query to identify the mail servers for the email recipients. Then the MTA establishes an SMTP connection with those mail servers. Then we have DNS text record. This is simply a fillable cell that domain admin can type into. Two of the most important uses for DNS text records are email spam prevention and domain ownership verification. Then we have name server. Name server is a server that handles queries regarding the location of domain names to various services. It defines your domain's current DNS provider. You can check this using the who is lookup tool. When you make a request for anything related to a domain name, it gets sent to the name server. Most of the time, there are multiple name servers. In response, the DNS server sends back the IP address. This works for website, mail servers, and anything else based on the domain name. Then we have SOA record. It defines the beginning of the authoritative DNS zone and specifies the global parameters for the zone. It is a set of data that provides critical resources for the domain name system that helps to validate domains on the internet. Basically, the zone needs this to work. SOA record basically has numerous information. It has serial number, which is the revision number of the zone file, primary name server, which is the host name for the primary DNS server for the zone. It has admin email, email to the admin responsible for administering domain's zone file. Then we have refresh rate, which is time in seconds. That secondary DNS server waits before querying the primary DNS server's SOA records to check for changes. Then we have retry rate, which is time in seconds that a secondary server waits before retrying a failed zone transfer, and then expire time, which is time in seconds that a secondary server will keep trying to complete a zone transfer. And then we also have default TTL, which is time to live value that applies to all resource records in the zone file. 
All DNS zones need a SOA record in order to confirm to IETF standards. SOA records are also important for zone transfers. Then we have the service record, which specifies a host and port specific services such as VoIP or instant messaging. Most other DNS records only specify a server on an IP address, but service records include a port at the IP address as well. Some internet protocols require the use of service records in order to function. And lastly, we have a pointer record. Think of this one as the reverse version of A or Quad A records. A pointer record, PTR for short, provides a domain name associated with an IP address and not the other way around. Basically a reverse lookup. A DNS PTR records are used in reverse DNS lookups. This is when a user submits a query that starts with an IP address to look up the domain name. Think of this as having a phone number, but you don't know who that person is. In a real world scenario, one will always use external DNS, otherwise known as DNS facilities of internet service provider, rather than having its own internal DNS server. However, if the company operates a large and complex network, it might have an internal DNS. There are numerous DNS providers like Google that offers cloud DNS, and DNS might be critical in environments in which the internet is heavily used. If you go that route, you need to know Domain Name System Security Extension, which is a suit of IETF specification for securing certain kinds of information provided by DNS. When it was first designed, DNS did not include any security measures. DNSSEC is used to add security features to DNS.